Hi guys, uh, I thought it was about time I brought you my review of the latest Chaos Codex. Uh, it's been a long time coming, uh, the old book was, was pretty damn good. Um, people say it was out of date, not able to take other codexes, I say that's a load of rubbish. Um, but we've got a brand new codex to play with now, hardback, absolutely gorgeous and I'm going to take you through it. So let's crack this bad boy open. So the first of the 6th edition codexes, beautiful artwork in it, really cranking up the standard, uh, which is really good to see. Uh, and it's done, who's this the one done by? It's done by Phil Kelly. Okay, so, first section of the codex, as you'd expect, loads of really cool artwork. Let's see if I can bring that in a little bit, and get that out of the way. Uh, and some existing artwork already, but we start our, uh, at the Horus Heresy, uh, as the other one, uh, as the other Codex did. But it covers a little bit more in depth, uh, especially as Games Workshop or especially Forge World has gone that further into that. So we've got pictures, you know, from the Heresy itself, detailing pre-Heresy armor, all the way through to obviously the current pieces. Now the old Codex used to focus; it was it was widely viewed uh, that, and I'm. I, Say now, I apologise for the flicker there, guys. I can't seem to do anything about it. Let's see if I can stop it a little bit. Either way, so the old codex was very much based on the traitor Space Marines rather than the original Legions, but they've given a really big nod to it in this one with the all with all nine Legions mentioned here, uh, and some of the more famous Renegade chapters as well. So th ones like the Flawless Host, the Red Corsairs, stuff like that. Um, Again, some really nice artwork. We've got some really cool ones of the uh, the new Helldrake in there. I love the idea of it being on fire while it's flying. That's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so go through. There's plenty of background. More stuff about the Black Crusades. Being a huge Black Legion player. For all those people who take the mick out of me. Yes, 13 Black Crusades. Some of them were successful, so go to hell. People who tell me 13 failures. So... Ever we go on to the, um, the timeline, which has of course been extended all the way up to uh, 995999 uh, of the 41st millennium. That means that come 7th edition 40k, they're going to have to start looking at you know the next millennium and the next stage. So it'll be Warhammer 41,000. So that aside, again, last bit of artwork, and then we get into the rules. So the main ones for uh, Chaos Space Marines, uh, if you have a Champion of Chaos Special Rule, which uh, covers um, all the aspiring champions, they have to accept and issue challenges, and if they win in a challenge, they get to roll on the Chaos Boon Table, which is really cool. Uh, it's, it's a D66, so your first one represents the tens, the uh, digits, the second D6 represents the singular di digits. So if I rolled uh, two and a four, 24, pick it on here um, this can do anything this can do anything from literally turning your character into a spawn to turning into a demon prince so there is an absolute load of cool stuff that can happen to your characters uh, they've also included brand new warlord traits on this side specifically for chaos which you know that's really cool I think they're going to be doing that for each uh, new book so uh, the marks now are a little bit different mark of corn has changed the most that gives you now rage so plus two attacks and counter attack. Nurgle gives you plus one toughness as usual. Slash gives you plus one initiative, and Zinch gives you a plus one invulnerable save. So they're very similar to the old rules. Um, so going back through the rules, uh, Chaos Lord, um, pretty much the same, still fearless. Uh, stats are pretty much identical to the old book. Sorcerers, again, pretty much the same, have a mastery level of 1 and can use Biomancy, Pyromancy and Telepathy, but can also use um, uh, the powers from whichever god they follow, other than Corn, of course. Then Demon Princes. Now, Demon Princes have had quite a big change. They are now much higher weapon skill. They're weapon skill 9. Uh, they have an initiative of 8, which is really high. Uh, strength and toughness are the same. Uh, more attacks, they've got 5 attacks instead of 4 and they're only leadership 9 but they are fearless, they've got demon there's something called veteran of the long war which um, in this book is now 
something for you to be able to equip your marines so they're like old school legionaries so they have hatred space marines and plus one leadership if they get that so he'll have hatred space marines now it also has some upgrades here uh which i'm trying to cut the glare out a little bit uh let's try that okay and basically these ones are slightly different to the standard um um marks because you are able to i mean so demon of corn has hatred of slanesh and has furious, furious charge so it, it doesn't get rage um you know uh, demon of slanesh gets rending uh, and can run further but has hatred corn so it's very characterful they i seem that they seem to be going with more fluff with this one more background okay so two new characters we've got the warp smith warp smith for you iron warriors players out there we've got a character awesome uh, he is the kind of anti-version of a standard tech marine, so he curses enemy vehicles, he can repair your vehicles, and he can stop people getting co uh, having um, ha has something called shatter defense, which is kind of the opposite of the bolster defense the tech marine does. So we've got him. Uh, we've got he's pretty standard stat line, um, ballistic skill five, two wounds, nothing too huge to write home about, but a handy character. A dark apostle. Uh, beseech the dark gods may re-roll on the chaos boon table and demagogue anybody within six gets to use his leadership of ten pretty handy um chaos space marines are pretty much the same now they've lost a point of leadership so they're now leadership eight with aspiring champions leadership nine if you give them the um uh, veterans of long war then they go up to leadership nine and leadership ten respectively so pretty standard no, nothing much to write home about there. We've got cultists in here. Now, cultists are now basically Imperial Guardsmen with a point less armour. Uh, they're nice and cheap. And, yeah, that's about all we've got to say. Although, what's amusing is that they're, even their aspiring champion, their cultist champion, has um, the Champion of Chaos rule. So they can, you can get a Demon Prince from a cultist champion. That amuses me. So, uh, we've got the Possessed. Possessed are now worth taking. Uh, weapon skill 4, strength 5, demons still, so they get 5 up and vulnerable. They're fearless, they've got fleet as standard, and they also have the Vessels of Chaos. So rather than a D6 random mutation at the start of the game, you now have a D3 random mutation. So plus 1, uh, re-rolling failed to wounds, AP3 weapons, or plus 1 attacks and initiative at the start of each fight phase, which is really handy. It means that they're actually worth taking now. Uh, Terminators, pretty standard. Uh, haven't changed a great deal. Chaos Spawn, similar to the uh, um, to the Possessed, in that they get a different uh, role each fight phase. So, okay, on to one of my favourite units, Obliterators. Um, pretty much the same, except they're now leadership 8, um, but fearless with Demon. Uh, they have built Bulky, which means they can now take transports, but they can also have all of the same weapons... It but they can now have an assault cannon, which is really nice, like 12 shots from three of them with rending. But they can't morph the same weapon each turn, because so, you know, it used to be with me, plasma cannons and more plasma cannons. So you've got to think a little bit more outside the box with these guys. So the mutilators. Um, I wasn't convinced about these to start with. Then I looked at what actually they were, and I was pretty impressed. So um, both obliterators and mutilators can take marks, so you can give these guys rage which is pretty nasty, but also they can morph into close combat weapons, so kind of the opposite of the obliterators. Um, and they have, they can go chain fists, lightning claws, power axes, power mauls, or power swords, all pairs, really nasty guys, something to really look out for. Um, so corn berserkers have lost an attack, but gain rage uh, and uh, counter attack, so pretty handy. Um, other than that, pretty much the same. Uh, Thousand Sons, exactly the same. Um, Plague Marines, Toughness 5, but now have Poisoned Close Combat Attacks. Very nasty. Um, what else have we got here? Noise Marines, again, pretty much the same. All these all these units are fearless, guys, so no change at all. Uh, Raptors, one of the big ones now done in plastic. Uh, they are now they now cause fear. Pretty nasty against, like, Guard, Eldar, um, low leadership armies. Be really nasty. Um, so, yeah, very cool. Warp Talons, the brand new unit. Uh, the same stats as a Raptor, but they have a 5 pin Vulnerable. Uh, and they have two Lightning Claws as standard, which is pretty nasty. So on the charge, they're getting three attacks each. If you, 
and that's if you've not marked them up. I'm not sure if they can take a mark. We'll come to that in a bit. Also, on the turn they arrive, if they deep strike, all enemy units within six count as being hit by a weapon with a blind special rule, which is, I think, either weapon skill and ballistic skill one or minus one weapon skill and ballistic skill. It's one or the other. But they are a very cool looking unit. I mean, that is a cool piece of artwork. Anyway. Um, ah, yes, Forge Fiends and Maul of Fiends, the brand new demon engines, very cool. Uh, the Forge Fiend is your shooter, uh, comes with two Hades auto cannons as standard, which are strength 8, AP 4, I believe, with four shots each. Um, you, uh, it can regenerate stuff, it's got It Will Not Die, it's got Fleet. What's really cool is that it's a demon, so it's got a 5 pin vulnerable, but it can take three plasma cannons, called ectoplasma cannons. That is terrifying. Um, your Maul of Fiend is your close combat one. Again, comes with two power fists, comes with um, magma cutters. It can move 12 inches and ignore terrain. It is, that is nasty. That is a very potent close combat unit. So I'm trying not to dwell on each one of these too long, guys, because I want to kind of whiz through the book. Now, one of my favourite units, the new Helldrake. Looking badass. Uh, an armor 12, 12, 10 flyer with three hull points. Yes, please. And it can also do something called meteoric descent, which means it can vector strike enemy flyers. That is potent. So I think that's going to be some of those in my lists. The filers, um, pretty much the same, but now have an invulnerable save and it will not die. Very nice. Um, your battle tanks, as standard, your land raider, your vindicator, your predator, uh, and your rhino. Nothing changed there. Then we've got the car uh, oh no, I like we've got the Hellbrute. Uh, so they are now, Dreadnoughts now known as Hellbrutes. They still uh, roll for being crazed. If it takes a glancing or penetrating hit, you place a crazed marker and you roll for it. Uh, and basically, it means the new table, which is D3, means it can't shoot its own troops anymore, which is glorious. That was one of the big things holding me back taking one of these guys. So definitely worth taking. So now we go on to the characters. Abaddon, very nasty. Um, can choose to use either of his weapons demon weapon AP 2 plus 1 strength or his claw times 2 strength AP 3 very nice um, we've got Huron who's no longer got a power claw he's got a, an, um, a demon claw which is really handy it's more likely he's going to be able to do some damage it gives him plus 2 strength and shred uh, and he casts a random psychic power return fantastic from the biomancy pyromancy or divination table Awesome stuff. Uh, Khan got rid of his in, uh, initiative holding back axe. He's now strikes initiative order um, with melee uh, armor bane for his axe. Plus one strength, making him strength six. Seven on the charge. Ouch. With AP two. Very cool. Uh, he still hacks at his own guys, though. So if you like rolling ones, probably best not to take him. However, he now has hatred, which means he can now re-roll those ones in the first round of combat. Handy. Uh, Araman, nasty as ever, Take, it's got a mastery level of 4, lots of psychic powers, biomancy, pyromancy, tele telepathy or zinch, and he's got a plus 2 strength force weapon. Typhus, uh, demon weapon, force weapon, plus 2 strength and wieldy. Um, my favourite bit, so he's pretty much as standard, favourite bit is he can now take cultists and turn them into zombies. So you can take plague zombies as part of your Nurgle army. Fantastic, they're going to be in my death guard. Um, Lucy's the Eternal, very nasty now. Uh, Armour of Shrieking Souls, um, 3 up save, 5 been vulnerable, takes a strength 4 AP 2 hit for every wound he suffers uh, on the enemy. Lash of Torment is reducing the number of attacks. But what's really nasty is his Duelist Pride. He has to issue and accept challenges, and his attack characteristic is equal to the weapon skill of an enemy uh, that he's fighting. So if you go up against Lelith Hesprax, you're fighting with nine attacks basic that's fun <laughs> uh fabius bile pretty much the same as he was before uh gets to give one unit fearless and plus one strength for the entire game never a bad thing uh he's got three shot poison two plus weapon and instant death melee weapon with no ap so those are your characters um lots of cool things here they've now got a section for demon weapons um, rather than just have a Cornate Demon weapon, they've got all different ones here, which is very cool. The powers of Nurgle, uh, Zinch and Slanesh. Zinch is very shooty with one blessing. Uh, Nurgle is very cursy one, a cursy sort of style, rather than 
uh, having a sort of direct damage. It does have some, but it's mostly kind of curse as you'd expect. And Slash, it has a blessing, uh, a malediction, and the shooting, two shooting ones as well. So, loads of cool psychic powers there to go from. There is no Lash Whip anymore, guys. So if you're a Lash Whip kind of character uh, for your standard army, not anymore. You have to rethink your, your way you're playing. I know that's the way I'm going to have to do it. Okay, so into the, the colour section, some really nice done up uh, armies here as ever. I've not spotted any new models. Uh, I've had a look. So, no new models that I can see, but who knows, we might be getting some soon. But some really cool stuff, the different legions, all sorts, really cool. I think they've really gone back to being able to do the legions in this one guys so if you do have a legion specific army you can now do it which is really cool so one last so the final bit for you guys into the rules i know this is quite a long video you'll have to excuse me but i thought you know i'm really excited about this book so i wanted to show you all what we've got um they've brought back the old war gear list if you see here so you've got your melee weapons, your ranged weapons, your special issue war gear, chaos rewards. That's all here, all pointed up. Um, so it will say in the sections, it can take things from kit like rewards, ranged, and you can pick it from here. So it goes back to kind of, I suppose, fourth or third ed for that. So um, most of the characters are now cheaper. Abaddon's 260, Khan's 160. Aramon's 230, Typus is 230, so a little bit cheaper, but what's really shocking, and quite cool if I'm honest, a Chaos Lord is only 65 points. Now, for a weapon skill 6, 3 attack initiative 5 fearless character, pretty damn potent. But if you start tooling him up, he's going to start being a lot more, so I think that's why they've done that. But for 65 points, that's really cool. Um, your HQ, you've also got your Sorcerer, which is 60 points. Your Demon Prince, which is now much more expensive to reflect just how rare they should be. Uh, and, you know, just how powerful they are. So they're now 145 points plus any options you take, which can easily take them above Abaddon's points cost. A Warpsmith is 110, a Dark Apostle is 105, and all of them can take upgrades. So troops, Chaos Space Marines and Cultists. Chaos Space Marines... Um, can be really changed around so they can they no longer come with a close combat weapon um, uh, but they come at 13 points a model really cheap what you can do is either buy a pistol sorry buy a close combat weapon as well as their bolt gun in which case a little bit extra or you can get rid of the bolt gun and choose to have it just as a, uh, a bolt pistol close combat weapon character so you can really kind of choose the style of your army if you want to go for world eaters you can do that you're not going to get penalized in points for it but if you want to go world leaders, we've got this. Now these, uh, actually, no, I'll come to that in a second. I've jumped ahead of myself. So into elites. Um, some of you will be wondering where the cult troops are. We'll come to those in a second. So we, we've got chosen, which can be taken as a troop's choice if you have Abaddon the spoiler. You've got possessed. You've got terminators, uh, the hell brute, and the mutilators. Um, mutilators coming in at 55 points a model. Uh, possessed at now at 26, which is two points cheaper than they used to be, I think. Okay, so here are all the cult troops. Uh, Corn Berserkers, Thousand Sons, Plague Marines, and Noise Marines. Now, what you can now do is, if you take a Chaos Lord with Mark of Corn, Nurgle, or Slash, uh, you get your Plague Marines, your Corn Berserkers, whichever mark you've taken, you get your cult troops as troops choices, which means you can build your army. You can actually have a themed Legion army, which is really cool. Um, to have Thousand Sons, you have to take a Sorcerer. But of course, all the main characters, Araman, um, Khan, all of those allow you to take them as troops choices as well. So you're not going to miss out if you take a special character. Quite the opposite. Cool. Um, bikers are still here. Spawn's still fast attack. Raptors are now 17 points a model. Warp Talons are, uh, are 30 points a model. 160 for 5. Then I've done them in squad sections. And the Hell Drake, the really important one for me, is going to be 170 points. So I'm probably going to be taking like, two of those in a 1500 point army. One with Hades Auto Cannon and one with the Balefire Flamer, which is an anti infantry kind of flamer weapon. Okay, so now my favourite part as Nine Warrior the heavy support choices. So we've got the Havocs, they're now cheaper. 
Um, as are all their guns. Uh, uh, Last cannon is only 20 points instead of 35, I think, in the old book. Uh, missile launchers are 15 points, but 10 points if you give an, uh, on, in addition to that to give them flak missiles. Obliterators are 5 points cheaper um, at uh, 70 points a pop. Defilers are 195, so they're a little bit more expensive, but they have got 4 hull points now. Forge fiends are 175, mauler fiends are 125. Uh, so quite cheap for a Mauler Fiend, I think. Um, Land Raiders 230, Vindicators 120, and the Predators 75. I think they've all stayed the same. So, that... Well, one last thing. You've got a really handy reference section with a fold-out bit at the back. It gives you all the boon table, gives you all the psychic powers, all the rules. A really handy extra that saves you having to flick through your entire book. Whew, so... That is the Chaos Book, guys. I've yet to figure out my army yet. Um, obviously, anyone who's seen my force knows I've got a fair bit. But, wow, what a book. It is absolutely beautiful. You've got loads of cool stuff in there. And it means I've really got to challenge myself to bring up a new army. And If anyone's got any suggestions, I'd love to see ideas for people have got for 1,500 and especially a 1,000-point list. Cause that's what I tend to play. Any ideas? Let me know. I'm gonna sort of have a play and see what I can um, uh, I can do. But also, keep your eyes peeled. I'm gonna be working on some more toys very soon for my chaos, which I will do some unboxings for soon. Thank you for this uh, for what for for watching this video, guys, and for this awesome book. Cheers for bearing with me. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Any questions, feedback, give me a shout. Thank you very much, guys. I'll speak to you later. Bye bye.